Previously, on the Adventure Zone Living Tree, you're all on a boat in a forest and you run into some goblins. They are all wearing weird helmets with their faces painted on. This seems scary at first. We don't mean you any harm. We just want some honey from your hive. I show them the honey by, like, taking it out. We're not okay with that. Okay, well, if you want some honey, here it is. You talk to them, and they say they didn't mean you any harm, and they take you to their giant ship on the ocean with a big sun in the middle, and it is just really cool looking. Okay, great. I use the magic of horse magic to ride my new pet across the sea on a magical giant wooden horse. I am King Triton. This is my queen, Queen Selene. The world is in turmoil. In the midst of it all stands the man of a thousand faces, the masked one. Famous for his many guises and disguises, he uses them to hide the secret of his true identity. The masked one has come for the throne. It's only a matter of time before he succeeds. Welcome to the Adventure Zone. My name is Griffin McElroy. I'm the Dungeon Master for this Dungeons & Dragons campaign. It's been a while, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. Oh, yeah. I think it was almost like two months ago or something. Uh, That's right. We got our new microphones. We did some updates to the website. This is going to be the biggest adventure yet. Yes, I'm really excited about this. This is going to be epic. Right, yeah. So I think we can safely assume that we've resolved everything with Morganus. We have uh, found the new home of the Sea Druid cult. We found out that they're planning on sending a message to Morganus through a magic mirror, and we discovered that Morganus is alive and well and living on an island in the middle of a lake in the mountains. And he's been mind-controlling these Sea Druids into a big old gang war against us. Yeah, it turns out that they are indeed working with Morganus. There's some sort of deal made between them. Uh, but... Morganus is a spy in the court of the Dragon Queen. I'm working for the Queen to get as much information as I can about her enemies because she has some serious enemies at the moment. Um, but that's not necessarily a problem for us because we're going to kill both of them one way or another. Yeah, they have some bad guys to fight, man. Well, there's a lot of them. A, they've got a big problem. They have a big problem. And yeah, they have a really big problem coming up. Oh, oh. Man, the shadow court is getting very powerful and it's oh just my God. So, getting more dangerous. Uh, yeah, that's the status of things so far. Mm, I feel like we've grown in stature and power a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> the changes in Nuts and Isadora are probably more apparent to us who have played the characters than to people who just listen. Yeah, it's pretty hard to tell what the players are going to do when you don't play the characters. But Isadora has fire magic now. So she can now... She can use fireballs now. Fire magic. That's a good one. Right. And she got to make these fireballs that would float in the air and just come down and burn everything. That was fun to see. Yeah, and I think we realized that Mac is a pretty powerful guy. Like, Isadora is a mage. Nuts is a melee fighter. And Isadora can use fire spells. Nuts, you know, he's an animal and a plant and a tree. I don't think Matt can use magic, but I'm pretty sure that Nuts can. So having two characters who have some magical abilities and who can fight, that is kind of cool. But now Nuts is learning how to breathe fire. I mean, I feel like we're at a point now where we just need to be honest with ourselves and say, okay, we've made Mac more powerful than Isadora. And she doesn't want to be more powerful than him because he's her lover. Well, Nuts wants to be the biggest, best talking fire breathing tree there is. The biggest, best, most incredible talking fire breathing tree in all of existence. He doesn't care how big. I just, it has to be the best. That's interesting. No one else is making any sense. And the fire breathing part is really just to, you know. Okay. I don't think it needs to be specific. It's fine. Yeah. So I don't know how many times we can talk about how, you know, how I want to be the biggest, most badass thing around, but... I'm still deciding what 
Isadora wants to do. I think that right now she wants to pick up the standard and go, you know, look for her brother who is currently in prison. So she wants to take the road up to the city and find out more information about who he was working with. But also she wants to try and recruit some people to help break him out. Break him out. Well, I mean, there's a good chance he's still in prison. I'm sure that if we can get a little bit closer to the prison, we'll figure out what the story is. So we're all playing characters. We're all playing characters. Right, right. This week, we're finally going to the root canals. There's no turning back now, right? Ah, uh, huh, exactly. Is this the place where you can literally, like, root through someone's butt? Yeah, for sure. Well, you said that we'd like the root canals, so I wasn't sure. I thought maybe you were lying no, to me. No, no, not at all. Wow, wow. Griffin's been really honest with us. I know. And there is a bit of a uh, theme here. You're seeing these areas, you're seeing this new environment, and you're encountering creatures and meeting characters for the first time. This is a uh, theme of our campaign, so I'm excited that we're getting to do it again. I am. Um... And then you hit this place where there's a whole bunch of trees and grass, and you heard some loud, weird sounds coming out of the deeper parts of the forest. It's like, yeah, gnawing. The sound of chewing coming from the deep part of the forest. Yeah. So this is this is the beginning of our trip into the root canals and and the source of the gnawing noises. Right. Is there anything else? Like, is there like any kind of goal or anything? Nope. Well, if you had a goal, it would be like to try to find out what is causing the gnawing noises under the roots of the living tree. Yeah. But what exactly are we looking for? Like, well, we need to find some way that there is a clue for us to find. Okay, then we investigate. Yes. Well, I figured Mac would go, hey, that sounds weird. Let's investigate. Yeah. Uh, and Isadora could probably tell where the sounds are coming from because she can telepathically sense them. Mac, Isadora, and Nuts investigate the forest. The gnawing sounds are getting louder and louder, so you just start going deeper. It seems like this kind of never-ending forest. And then you come across some fungus-covered mounds of what looks like dirt just hanging out in the middle of the forest, which seems to be where the gnawing sounds are coming from. Isadora uses her ability, like her fire sense. She can actually feel where the sound is coming from. And when they go investigate, she tells them to move behind the mound of dirt. So Mac nuts and Isadora sneak behind the dirt. That's cool. And you see a weirdo gnome with a mushroom for a head. Yeah. Is this... Like a mushroom man? Yes, the mushroom man. He's got the gnome body, and then he's got this giant um, mushroom head. It's like the opposite of the fungus-covered mound of dirt. Yeah, uh, exactly. And he's wearing this little tiny leather outfit, so it's hard to tell what he looks like. He looks kind of like, I don't know, a little baby that's been left in the bath too long. Uh, Mac just tells the Mushroom Man that there's a big event tonight and they're invited to be part of it. Oh my gosh. This is just, this is my favorite moment of this entire campaign. Can we go too? Uh, Mac is like, yeah, we just left this village. I've got these weird friends with me. They're my cousins. They're probably all crazy. I don't know if you're going to eat us or kill us, but we should definitely have a party and have a good time. Yeah, he just kind of runs. You just hear the crunch of feet in leaves and the sounds of him running past you. Mm. And then he goes down this dirt path, which splits off in a bunch of different directions. We should catch him. I, I think he wants to come to the party. Isadora goes out and she grabs him by his legs and she pulls him back. And then he... I didn't think that would work because... I thought he'd be able to get away from her, but apparently he's kind of slow. Um, just thinking, what if, like, Isadora can use fire, right? Like, that's why she's there. So it's kind of interesting for me to think maybe she'll try to, you know, set him on fire. What? And I'm no! already laughing at that idea. You would like to see that, wouldn't you? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, that would be good. Uh, well, what else are we going to do? Okay, I cast a fireball on the mushroom man. Mac, stop her. Stop uh, her. I cast a Mac, fireball. don't let her. Nuts. You don't want to be captured, right? You're a paladin. You're trying to save people. Oh, come on, man. Well, so the mushroom man just dies. He's dead. What? 
No. Isadora is like, oh my God, I killed him. She's a little embarrassed. But she kind of goes, okay, what are we supposed to do now? Should we leave? Is that what we should do? No, we can't just leave him here because... We have to loot him. Mac. Well, there's no treasure here. He's dead, but you might find something on his body. And Nuts is like, no, we're not going to take anything from him. We're just going to leave him here. Yeah, so he has this um, a head that's made of mushroom. And now it's like a skull. It's got eyes and it's got a mouth, but there's nothing there. It's all like spongy stuff. Well, it's not like like his actual body is made of mushrooms, you know, like a mushroom man. You don't even know if that's true. Going to go with my gut, okay? Yes, go with your gut. So let me ask you a question, Mac. Do you remember the name of the guy who led the gnomes in the root canals the first time you came here? No, no. But I remember he had a name. I think it was something gnomey. Uh, he was kind of a jerk. He was a little bit rude, right? He was. He was also a little bit of a wise ass. Yeah, like there was one time where he was just like, hey, thanks for saving me. If you're ever in the forest, you can stay with me for a while. And we just kind of thought that was really weird. Like, what do you even say back to someone who says something like that? Okay, so this is where the gnomes come up and say, hey, we have a ton of food and booze. You guys can come in here and eat and drink and make fun of us for being so poor and sad. Well, so no, because this is him. This is the same guy. Anyway, you killed the mushroom man. He was like their leader. There are a lot of villagers. You killed their leader, and now they're going to come after you with spears. Uh, well, that makes sense. I knew that he wasn't just like a random dude off the street. Right, exactly. You actually met him back in the deep dark abyss when you first went to the Underdark, and they were in the labyrinth, and they were in the ruins where the spider lady lived. Uh, it was the same gnome that told you to come down here in the first place. The next time you see the gnomes, they might not be so friendly, and now that you killed the fungus man, they'll probably come after you. They'll take their revenge. There are definitely going to be a lot of surprises for the party in the root canals. Uh, this is going to be a bit of a different situation than we've been dealing with so far. It's going to be kind of like a huge puzzle where we have to figure out our way through it. The gnomes live here. They have their own set of laws and everything like that. If you break those rules, you know, you might get a spear in your face. Why would you stab somebody that looks like me, especially since they're like the most helpful people we've met so far? Well, they might stab you because you just killed their boss. Yeah. That's good logic. Mac is like, okay, you know what? I'm going to do a little bit of investigating. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. We should definitely do that. Okay. Yeah. And so let's play the game. Let's get a good fight going. What about the gnawing sounds? Is that going to be something that like, we can come back to and say, oh, let's go check those out again. Or is that just kind of the way it is? Oh, you can do that. That is just the start of the dungeon. Right. Yeah, I don't know how you're going to tell a sound. Like, I mean, is it underground? I'm going to assume it is because how else would it be making noises? Well, I know there are these types of places that have like water under it and the roots make a noise. Yeah. I think so. And is the root canal something like this? That is the kind of place that I thought of. I thought they could go up, they could go down. There are holes and passages. And you don't know where they are going to lead you. Okay. And the gnawing sounds are, where are they? Okay, well, let's roll a d20. Uh, d20. Let's see what we All get. Right, you rolled uh, 21. And your success is 9. Okay, so... You hear a sound coming from the other side of the door. What is it? Someone chewing on something. Someone chewing on... You can make out that there are teeth. Teeth? And you can tell that they are sharp. Uh, sharp teeth? Ow. 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 Yes. What's happening? No. We go in the door. Okay. Right. So you enter this cave and you hear the sound coming from deeper down. You come across a huge cavern. And as you get closer you see there are a bunch of little gnomes standing around who point at you and then run away. What do you think they're doing? I think they're trying to get us lost. Why would they be doing that? Probably to steal our stuff. So what do you do next? Uh, what I do next is I cast light and um, the light shines on these gnomes. The gnomes stop running away and they seem to have come from a couple hundred feet deeper. And they're all standing there in a row facing you. And they're looking at you like, 
wide, wide-eyed, kind of terrified, and they start making these noises. I can only describe them as uh, kind of like how animals do, like goats. Like yes, like they're bleeding out for help. Is this a gnome village or something? No, it's actually well. The first thing you notice is that they don't have a single item of value. They they look scared though. And Isadora, I think you can tell why. It's because you can sense magical auras coming off all of them. Yeah, and I don't know if that means they can use magic, but we should probably be on guard. Right. Okay. So I make my move and I cast Blink and um, I go into the darkness and um, right back there. And as I'm getting closer to these gnomes, I you get- can see they're all glowing with magic again. What's and going on? You start to notice things about these guys. They're not gnomes. These are hobgoblins under an illusion. Two of them stand guard at the entrance while the others scour the ground. You sense that they are searching for something, something small, but not invisible. Hobgoblins are like goblins and orcs got drunk and had a party. Uh, so... Oh. Okay, yeah. I'm thinking we should cast spells that, like, slow or disable them. Like, if they try to use a weapon and they have their arms bound, then they'd be unable to use it effectively. Um, so my ability scores are 18 constitution 16 charisma 16 intelligence 17 wisdom and i'm basically the one who does most of the talking and casting so i know that i could cast blink on the hobgoblins to slow them down okay so you can cast blink you've got a low intelligence high wisdom and high charisma right good stats he's a charismatic guy yeah that's right. I'm a charming dude. You have a charisma score higher than Clint's. That's right. So Travis is a charming dude. Well, that's pretty accurate. I'd say that's a pretty expensive spell. Uh, th- the thing is, I only have about seven seconds worth of magical energy in my reserve. So I use it pretty quickly and I can feel myself getting weaker. So now I'm starting to get pretty nervous. So then Nuts gets the idea to do his little magic trick. He grabs the hobgoblins that were coming right for us, and then he turns into this big, giant walking tree with tons of legs and starts running through the cave and starts kicking these hobgoblins back into the cave. Mac knows he needs to do something, so he turns and runs out of the cave. And this is where Nuts gets his chance. He rushes out and uses his tree magic to create a huge trident that launches right at one of the hobgoblins, Nuts has three branches sprouting from his top, and he's holding some sort of trident. One of the branches breaks off from the trunk, crashing into one of the hobgoblins, sending it tumbling away into the grass. Okay, Mac is being chased by the hobgoblins. We see them closing in on Mac. They are gaining speed, but Mac gets cornered against the edge of a cliff. We see a gigantic tree trunk standing between Mac and the hobgoblins. It's Nuts. And then the rest of the hobgoblins take off after him and surround Nuts, so there's no escaping for him. Then the hobgoblins attack. Hey, wait, wait, don't kill me. I'm trying to kill you guys here. I'm going to set them on fire by breathing fire. Uh, the hobgoblins fly up in the air, their clothing still glowing from the fire Mac used to burn them. The hobgoblins burn up from the fire and are defeated. Mac's spell had worked. Mac runs past the other players. The others can see how happy he is. But he isn't the only one. Everyone knows that Mac is the most powerful player in the group now, which makes him very important. And then we will go to our commercial break. This week's sponsor is Raytheon. Thank you, Raytheon. Um, Thank you, Raytheon. And I have to say, that's really... Uh, That's not true. Yeah, you know what? It is. There's a lot of Raytheon going on. Yes, there is. So the one is the missile, and the other... The other is the drone. Oh, my goodness. Okay, oh, no, it is the drone. Sorry. I just got excited for a second, but it was the... It's the drone. We were all like, what are they launching? Is it some new weapon? Are we in trouble? Yeah, it is. It is not a weapon. It is... It looks like a missile. Yeah, like a small-scale one. So... But it is not a weapon. It's uh, the drone. So you remember from last episode, there were a drone that appeared from our friend here who shall go unnamed because he doesn't want us to know his name. But it was not a weapon. This isn't a weapon either. This is another drone. And 
it has come from whatever place it's stored in or whatever place it's made in, I suppose, and, and is ready to be deployed when we need well, it. Well, let me. So if you think about it, this is also a way for the company to make money and pay for itself as well. You know what? That was an idea that probably came up in the boardroom. Yeah. They're like, we've got these drones. They look cool. Yeah. They'll help with recruitment. Yeah. Let's sell yeah. them. That is absolutely the most likely scenario. Well, and that also explains. Well, there is a bunch of things it can do. It could be used if we're feeling like being proactive as a reconnaissance drone. It could be used as an attack drone. Justin. It can certainly defend against uh, missiles or artillery fire as well. Mm -hmm. It can fly for a long time. Anyway, they sent me one for free. I could figure out how to get it to work. And does it work? Because the last one didn't, did no. it? No. The last one wasn't. It seemed to be very hardwired uh, into. I'm not going to answer that question. All right, fine. You've got this thing, which is clearly not a weapon. You've said, and I agree with you, it seems like it's a drone. What should we do with it? Do you it? want to take it back to your house and show off and say, look what your tax dollars paid for and look what a wonderful gift I gave you? No. Uh, I don't think I can really bring it anywhere without it. Causing chaos or, you know, embarrassing me or something. So, um, no, I mean, it's just sitting in my garage here because I don't want to take it out in public. I guess I haven't thought of a plan yet, but I can't wait. I mean, my God, what kind of fun stuff we could oh, do together. that sounds, that is brilliant. Okay, sure. Anyway, that's the end of the ad. Visit Raytheon at raytheon.com and use offer code BK to get you 10% off your first purchase. Okay, so Mac is standing on the cliff, and he spies a body lying at the bottom of the cliff. Uh, that's a body. Oh, wow. You see wow. a body? You can see the ledge. It looks like he's fallen into a pit, or maybe a sinkhole, or maybe just fallen into a hole in the ground. Oh. Oh, my gosh. I cast Levitate, which is an eighth-level spell that allows me to float in the air. And when you levitate over, you can see the body. What does the body look like? Well, uh, first off, it's uh, a guy. Yeah, a guy, all right? We all know what a guy looks like. It's a guy. He's, um, he's got dark blue robes. Mm. We're gonna, you'll be able to see him, but he's not. I mean, he's kind of blurred out. You can't see his face. Mm -hmm. But there's something really wrong with the body. It looks. I don't know, kind of milted. What do you mean? What do you mean it doesn't look right? I'm gonna assume that you mean this guy was just uh, alive and well. And then he fell into a hole. <laughs> That's and yeah. then he melted. He looks like what happened to his legs? He's got a massive wound in his um, legs. Mama. He looks. I don't know. He looks like someone just took a spell to him and he exploded. So I was thinking that I could use my ability to create constructs to have a look around. Like I could create a construct out of nothing. I like that. Okay. Uh, so what did you want to make? What sort of thing do we need? Well, I thought I might just create something small that I can send to look around. It could just be like a plant or a bug. Oh, uh, spy. That sounds great. A spy. Awesome. Um, the root canals are just all covered in trees and stuff. So what if you made a bee? Like a really big bee? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Bees. They're real good at buzzing around. Yeah, you could have a lot of them. And then, like, make them go buzz. What if we had them attack the hobgoblins in their sleep? Yeah. So they would wake up, and the uh, first thing they'd see is a bunch of bees crawling in their bed. Then they would just go fuck and die instantly. I mean, actually, I remember when we had the big fight with the worm tree. You thought, well, this is kind of a good idea and you made a bunch of bees and you made a really great big bomb out of the bees that, it was amazing that was fun so you're gonna you want to make some bees how many do you make i'll make a hundred of them and send them to crawl all over the hobgoblins bodies while they're asleep they'll wake up see bees crawling in bed next to them and then of course die okay make a dexterity check 25 okay so first let's see how many bees you made Okay, I can make 38, but it might take me an hour. That's great. I think, ideally, you want to have them all do exactly the same thing. Right. We can keep going through this whole area and then just leave. Well, like, you could just say, yeah, we're going to make a camp. 
We're going to spend the night at the edge of the woods, you know, like a nice camping trip. And we'll be there in the morning like, oh my gosh, remember the fungus guy? Oh my God. I just remembered we killed the mushroom man. Yeah, the mushroom man. In a fire? Yeah, well, it was interesting. You didn't really have anything else to do. So you just kind of let him run around and then he ran around the forest until he died. It was almost as if he was one of the like an elemental in D D. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that is a thing. It was fun to watch that unfold. Yeah. And you guys sit around and eat some of his mushroom stew and like drink some mushroom wine. Oh, that's good. That's real good. What's the big deal about mushroom wine? Is it like does it make you want to kill everyone or is it just a normal wine? It's totally like uh, regular wine, but also your face will turn into a fungus. Okay, let's get a fight going. Okay, so your next encounter in the root canals is an ancient and powerful wizard. Yeah, so he just suddenly comes up from under the floor and he's got his eyes all swiveled around and he's looking at you. You're like, oh, no way. This is, you've seen him before. He appears behind you and he says, you can't get out of here and you think he's going to kill you. Yeah, yeah, sure are. I'll roll a saving throw, okay? Uh, and this is how you die? No, no, of course not. No, this isn't some, this is the beginning of a journey. We're going to fight him, and if we want to know who he is, we can find out later. Oh, yeah. The power of a tree to defend itself against the evil and corruption of the world. No, I don't need to roll because I already know who it is. He's Kringus Maw. One of the crowns, right? Yes, that's correct. I thought he was dead. He is a very powerful wizard, and he is going through a lot of personal stuff and has had a bit of a breakdown, so he's really not in his right mind. Uh, wait, so when you say a little bit of, uh... A breakdown, it's like he's having a mental health moment. And he's gonna eat our souls. Yes. Yeah, he's gonna eat our souls. With his mouth full of hobgoblins. Just so you know... He is not going to eat your souls. Hey, he's going to do something else with your souls. Oh, cool. So, um, what does he look like? So, um, he's got this big, like, staff that he's got, and he's got these black robes on. He's got, like, a hood. Uh, he's got a kind of goatee thing going on. Like, he's wearing glasses, and he's got a really deep voice correct and he's got this long gray hair like tied back into a ponytail he's got a ponytail and he's got this beard that looks like it's made of like pieces of wood does he i i think he does okay cool he's got that sure yes oh i love this guy yeah that's i mean it's not like it matters he is, a, he, is a, he is an extremely powerful wizard, and he's been here for years. But since he is, is going through a bit of a hard time mentally, and he's kind of going crazy, he's kind of taking advantage of that. Oh, uh, okay, okay. I mean, we're all in the same room. You know, Nuts is in the corner. I think Max standing there. He's standing right in front of Kringus. Yeah. And Kringus is looking at Nuts, and he knows who you are. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do we know each other? Oh, yes. I remember you. Is it okay if we sit down? Yeah, sure. So, here's the deal. You guys know this guy. Yeah. You guys recognize this guy, and he sort of came up from the floor and said, Hey, hey, it's me. Nice to see you. Yes. I'm going to sit over here. So, I'm going to be sitting right here on the ground, on the floor. Okay. Uh, because I'm a big old insect, a uh, huge bug, and also because I don't want to talk to people, so I like to sit in the corner and do my own thing, and then sometimes I'll just feel like I'm there, but I'm not actually there. And that's basically what happens when you go insane. I've had it happen before. Where I was like, oh, I'm going crazy, and I just felt like I was there. But I wasn't actually there. Yeah. You ready to roll? Yeah. All right. Roll your initiative. Okay. Okay. Go. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Oh, no. Oh, shit. Nice job. He's dead. Wow. Uh, no. Okay. I'm dead? Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. Uh, uh, wow. Poor guy. Hey. 
he's dead. Are you sure? Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, Look at that. Oh my goodness. Oh no, there no. He goes again. Oh boy. Oh, no. Nice shot. Yeah, this is my fault. Wow, wow. Oh boy. There goes nuts. There he goes. There's nuts. There's nuts. There's nuts. So <laughs> that was very bad. Uh, no. But but Mac will be okay. Yeah. And that could be the worst thing ever or not. You know, it could be. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I'm going to narrate something that happened when Nuts died. Okay. After Nuts died, his body was put into a magical coffin. The magic coffin turned him into a skeleton. And then the coffin was placed in a tomb, and the tomb was closed with a huge stone boulder. Is that all? And then the boulder fell down the hill. Okay. So Mac has lost his friend and his companion, and he's pretty bummed. But there's good news, though. Well, the rest of you are able to survive the dungeon. Oh. Oh. And a hundred years later, when another adventuring group moved in, there were still a bunch of bad guys there, because you didn't even fight them or do anything about it. Yeah. Well, that was a little bit sad. It... it was... Yeah, it was. Yeah, that was a little bit sad. Uh, I'm sorry, Justin. I... I'm sorry. That was too much sadness for me. Well, I have to admit, when Nuts died at the end, I wasn't sure how long he would be able to hold back the tears. You know what I'm talking about. Those big wet drops that fall down your face. The ones that feel like they could make you cry forever if it weren't for the fact that you can wipe them away in less than 10 seconds. So how does this relate to me? You were the one who died from rolling so bad. Yeah, I'm still in shock. It's all sort of a blur. Oh my God, there are tears coming out of your eyes. You have to wipe them away. Yeah, that I get the tears to stop. They're a slippery mess, hmm. man. Look at the ceiling, then look away. Anyway, you need to make a new Dungeons and Dragons player character. I might try uh, Dragon Mancer or a mage who can turn himself into a snake or something. I can roll you one in like five seconds. I'm going to go ahead and tell you how your stats are. Okay, so you've got 18 strength. You have nine dexterity, so you can climb pretty well. And you got Charisma 16, so that means you get to make friends really easily, I can tell. You have three hit points. That's actually a lot, especially for a first-level character. I'm impressed. Well, that solves that. My favorite part of this episode was Kringus Maw. I didn't see it coming. It felt very much like the old days. I almost forgot that this game is supposed to be funny. I love what Griffin did with Kringus. I can't wait to see him turn into an Orshish princess next week. That's gonna be awesome. Um, the real reason I love this episode so much is that it finally gives us a good reason for why Kringus Ma can't stop the Sea Druids from taking over his homeland. It wasn't because he's weak or he doesn't know how to fight or that the Sea Druids are just too powerful. Nope, the Sea Druids are a bunch of corrupt assholes who are just taking advantage of his poor, good-hearted nature. That's the cringes we know and love. The other thing that stood out about this episode was Mac's reaction when he realized he was cornered and surrounded by those hobgoblins. He wasn't just standing there frozen. I guess it wouldn't have been so impressive if he'd immediately used the magic he'd learned from his father to cast a fire-breathing spell that would have destroyed those hobgoblins and made him stronger and faster than anything. He actually ran away first. It was pretty cool when he killed the hobgoblins and made their bodies burn up into thin air. There is definitely a reason that he didn't want to jump off that cliff. Mm -hmm. And no, it doesn't have anything to do with how he'd be dead on impact because of the way he's built. It has everything to do with the fact that we're currently inside of a fantasy world. And in this fantasy world, the very act of jumping off a cliff is an act of certain death. It reminded me of that episode of Doctor Who where Clara and Rose went through some weird rift or portal to another world. But instead of a planet full of giant robots, they found themselves in an alternate dimension that was literally a different dimension filled with giant spiders and giant insects. It was called the Doctor Who episode Blink, and it had a pretty big impact on the series. I mean, that's how the show ended, after all. And then 
the BBC rebooted the entire franchise, changing things up in ways that the original creators didn't agree with. And now we're stuck watching the new Doctor played by Peter Capaldi, who isn't nearly as charming as Matt Smith, the actor who played the 10th Doctor. But back to the point. This has been a really great episode, but it's definitely time to say goodbye. Travis, please sign off. And that's it for us here. You can listen to more episodes of our show on our website at RPG or on iTunes or wherever fine podcasts are sold. And if you enjoyed it, for more information, please visit DungeonsAndDungeonsShow.com. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Dungeons and Dungeons and Dungeons and Dungeons and Dungeons. Our next stop is New York Comic Con, which means we're going to be rolling a lot of dice and having fun. Until then, keep role playing. Keep role playing. Keep having adventures. And as always, thanks for listening. Oh, and Griffin. What? Can I have a hug? What? No. I don't do hugs. Uh, Can I at, at least have a high five? No. Okay, all right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you again next week. All right, bye. Bye, kids. Bye.